tuning into Spectrum Talk. My name is Ruby Jones, and here with me today is Mr. Ed Dwight, a local artist here in Denver who is celebrated as the first African-American astronaut candidate in NASA's space program. Mr. Dwight's story is featured in The Space Race, a documentary about Afrofuturism that will be shown during the Denver Film Festival on Thursday, November 9th at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science's brand new Infinity Theater. In the film, he and other Black astronauts discuss their experiences and the impact race has had throughout their journey. Mr. Dwight, thank you so much for your willingness to speak with me and congratulations on the space race. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you much. Of course. During the making of the space race, what feelings were brought up when you looked back at your experiences with NASA? Oh, well, uh... I, I there's been so many. This has been quite a long time ago. It's about sixty years ago now, and uh, and there's been so much uh, in that period of time, and so many films and recognitions and all that kind of stuff. But I, I don't. Uh, the having special feelings about this particular thing is just a matter of course. But it's just been continuous ever since I, uh, you know, left the military and left. Uh, my space training. So uh, I, I was, you know, uh, uh, honored, if you will, about, uh, you know, being featured in, in the uh, in the movie. And uh, But again, there's been so much. I, I, I didn't know the movie w- w- had, had me uh, so centered in the movie because normally you do a, do a movie and they, and they, um, film you for a week and then when you go to airtime you get about three minutes of airtime right <laughs> so 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 anyway you know i i, I was uh, i was obviously honored uh, uh more importantly though uh is that is the uh is, is the distribution and and the worldwide recognition uh that this movie is going to generate uh, uh and that is a good thing Yes, I mean, I agree. I think that you especially deserve all of the acknowledgments and recognition that you've received throughout the years, but I'm excited too. It sounds like the film is picking up a lot of great acclaim so far, and I'm excited Mm -hmm. about the screening um, that's coming up Mm -hmm. so that everybody in Denver has a chance to see it. Now, while... While you prepare, while you were preparing for a potential space flight, all those years ago, what was the biggest challenge that you had to overcome? Well, uh, uh, convincing. You have to understand that uh, uh, I I was appointed to the program t- some twenty years before the second group of astronauts uh, were 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 nominated. So so, so that was a twenty year span of time. And that's what people don't realize. They think it was a continuous thing. That was that was the first, and, and then and then it went on from there. But that's not uh, what happened. What they did, they ended up spending that twenty years deciding whether blacks were uh, intelligent enough, uh, uh, brave enough to be astronauts, and and they spent mm-hmm. that time trying to unravel me and unravel. The black uh, uh, engineering community, uh, you know, before they came around to this idea that uh, okay, uh, uh, I, I think we've got enough of, of, of attention that to, uh, you know to the black folks to to you know give them a window about what engineering is about, what science is about, what space travel is about, and now we can move on it. And and that was the most interesting part of that twenty year span. I see. It sounds like it was very experimental at that time. So I bet it was like full of all kind of ups and downs and expectations. Yes. Yeah. Now, like you said, mm-hmm. it's been 60 years since John F. Kennedy was assassinated and your candidacy came to right. an end. In that time, there's mm-hmm. been some major developments in space flight, including privatized mm-hmm. trips to space. What do you think about right. the future of space travel? And what do you think that space exploration will include into the future? Well, you know, uh, there's no place else to go. I mean, that's the only frontier left. Mm. Uh, really, it's, you know, you know, when you sit down and think about what's left, you know, really what's left to do. 
and 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 the challenges are just absolutely enormous because uh you know uh, uh you know you know the nearest planet that has our building blocks for life and stuff or you know are two hundred light years away uh and so here we're relegated if you will to just exploring stuff in our galaxy like they want to go to mars next they want to do a moon base uh and, and so we're really limited as to how far we can go and how much we can do and what what is the feedback uh, for it I mean, in other words we, we we normally go explore the planets looking uh, you know ironically the way americans are looking for a profit motive you know right you know, it's yeah, yeah. You know, does Mars have the stuff that we need? Do they have coal? Do they have oil? Do they, you know, you, you see what I'm saying? And uh, and so since we pr- pretty much explored and tried to uh, expend purposely all the resources here on Earth, and it's, it's absolutely shameful that that our founders and our and the people who run this country and the business people who who really really run the country. Uh, uh, have, have spent so much time uh, not preserving our resources and using reusing our resources, uh, uh, you know, uh, stingily and uh, and allow uh, and allowing it, allowing the resources to last. It's like the, there's a big move to just take all the oil out of, out of the out of the ground and then take all the gold out of Africa and take all of this out of that and hurry and get it out. Uh, you know, before it's all over, and that's the that's the distressing part. If you've spent any time at all, and I'm a kind of a space bug, I, you know, I keep up with what's going on and the missions and the and where they're going and how long they're going to take to get there and what are the, what's the downstroke uh, or they going to get back, which is uh, which is a critical issue because uh, you know it's, it's a nine month one way trip to Mars. Wow, uh, and, and and you know, and you got to get there, but you got to get back. Mm-hmm. You know that that means nine months coming back. So how do you get back? Where do you get the energy from to get back? So so you got to take enough energy to get there, land, uh, uh, launch again, and and go up and come back. Uh, uh, you know, and then there's eating. Well, how do you eat for nine months? And of course, they got hydroponics. I've given lectures and stuff. At some of the schools that, that specialize in hydroponics, which means you can grow veggies and stuff like that without dirt, uh, you know, and so you'll have, uh, you'll have to be growing as you're eating uh, for nine months. You got to serve somebody a meal for three meals a day. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, so, so you know, you know, that's a lot to think about uh, in, in doing these things, you know. I'm so glad you mentioned that because my daughter was reading the description for the space race in the Denver Film Festival uh, booklet, and she's a major Mm -hmm. space buff, too, and she wanted me to ask you uh, what you thought about Mars. So you just answered that, Mm -hmm. and I was going to ask you um, if you do still keep updated with everything that's going on with NASA and with these different space companies and what your thoughts are. So thank you, because those were my next questions. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of near space stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm due to go up in uh, February. Uh, they're gonna, uh, there's a, 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 a blue origin is, uh, there's a plan to send me up, uh, uh, you know, in late February. Uh, oh my gosh! Uh, uh, yeah, and and so I've been I've been in training for that, but uh, but that's just a kind of a gratuitous uh, effort. But yeah, you know, <laughs> and my call sign is, is justice. <laughs> that's so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> uh, so uh, so uh, you know you know I'm kind of I'm kind of excited about that. But however, you know I've done. When I was flight, t- when I was uh, a test pilot, I, I mean, I got as high as I ever wanted to get in just a normal airplane. I got high enough to see the curvature of the Earth and see huh. to get outside the atmosphere a little bit, and so so that, that wouldn't be anything uh, uh, other than routine for me because I was I had been doing that anyway, as, you know, as a test pilot. Uh, right. So. Uh, 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 it, it would be just a, a, a kind of a gesture and. 
and, and you know, allowed me to look out the window and say, oh, yeah, there's the earth down there. <laughs> That's incredible. That's so exciting. I'm happy for you. Wow. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to do an interview afterwards so you can tell me how it went. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> That's so cool. Well, my final question is uh, that the space race discusses the experiences of Black astronauts in the past, but what advice do you have for African-American men and women who want to pursue space-related careers today? Yeah, well, you know, uh, when we think about this, you know, the last selection, there were 12,000 applicants for about 10 or 12 seats uh, to, or 10 or 12 spaces. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, uh, uh, there, there, there are a lot of very fast young people that are really, really fascinated. And, so, and the age is critical because of the, of the time involved in training to go to the outer, you know, the outer reaches of our, of our, of our, of our galaxy here. And, and and so so you have to you have to be young enough you have to be old enough to get the proper uh, scientific education and young enough to use it to, to use the time up before you can actually get in, in a spaceship and get a spaceship designed so it can go to the outer reaches of our galaxy right. so there's a combination of a, a lot of different things going so which means to our in the black community and the good news is for our young black kids that a lot of the astronauts that are, have been up and, and I've spent the last six years giving talks to the kids and stuff like that about this, uh, you know, it, it's, it's proper preparation and not something that you do in a year or 18 months. It's a lifelong thing starting very, very young and staying with the math and the science and the stuff that you need so the math and science and arithmetic and all that kind of stuff becomes natural to you. Mm. Where you don't have to struggle with it, you know what I mean, and uh, and so for it's it's a long journey uh, to get ready, and you got to start very very young. You just don't start after you graduate from high school or graduate from college and decide, oh, I want to be an astronaut, because it doesn't work that way. You you have to have arithmetic and science and biology and chemistry almost in your blood by the time you get out of high school and college. Well, it's encouraging to see all of the STEM programming for youth then, if that's the case. Um, and mm -hmm. it sounds like you're saying that parents really need to get their kids involved in these programs that are available to young kids. And I think maybe sometimes there's a tendency to not really understand how those experimental classes and things can help them at mm -hmm. such a young age. Right. But I'm glad you said that as well, because, yeah, yeah well, they can get started. Well, you know, they, well, uh, the other most, 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 most important thing is the astronaut part is the tip of the spear. Uh, the spear has a long shaft, and that long shaft is going into engineering mm. and science. And, and the guy that you, you I, I, I can't think of, uh, of his last name, but he, he works for, 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 uh, for Blue Origin. He was a young 28-year-old black man that is designing and building a, 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 a three-stage rocket for Blue Origin. A young black man, 28 years old, wow. went to Purdue University. So the astronaut part is fascinating, but more fascinating to me are the, are, are, are the young engineers and scientists that make that whole thing happen. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and so the, that's a critical thing, and, and it, you don't get all the glory that the astronaut guys and, and gals get. You don't get all that glory, uh, but in, in time, it, it, it's going to happen that you do get that glory. Yeah, you know because they, you know they got to move off of it. Uh, you know that, that 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 astronaut idea thing that the astronauts or the, or the uh, you know, they're they're the the astronauts of the end game, the beginning and the, all, all the way up to that part are engineers and scientists. And the good news is a lot of them are black nowadays. Okay, that is good news. Uh -huh. Well, Mr. Dwight, that's all the questions I have today. I'm so uh -huh. looking forward to seeing the space race, and uh -huh. congratulations again, and uh -huh. thank you for speaking uh -huh. to me. I wish you all the best on your Blue Origin trip, and I can't wait to hear how it went. Yeah, 
thank you very much. Appreciate it, okay? Sure, thank you. Tickets to see the space race are available at denverfilm.org. After the screening, Mr. Dwight will participate in a Q&A to further discuss his journey. So show up with your questions ready and enjoy this wonderful film. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening.